is a play on words, um, and it, it sort of gives a framework or a set of guidelines for us to how might we imagine um, a future that is tropical, right? Because a lot of futures are not necessarily distributed in a tropical context. A lot of it's very clean, it's space, it's, uh, it's white, it's, you know, it's not necessarily like in the tropics or in the tropical zones. So from a sci-fi perspective, uh, you don't really see that much media coverage, nor from like a, from an imaginary or speculative perspective. So the, the Institute just really allows people to just take these words, tropical futures, and run with it. And whether, whether they're creating new sorts of music or it's maybe applying um, a different way of looking at uh, graphic design, um, or even in an urban context, it might be a way for us to analyze like a, an urban landscape in terms of um, looking at what tropical futures might necessarily mean. Like for example, um, the other day I was walking down the street and you know it's quite common to see water dispensers here where you pay five pesos for, for a single use plastic with the water. But in many ways that is a future scenario um, because it might point towards something like water scarcity, which we are facing within the Philippines in terms of like Manila and Cebu. So like within these words I'm able to sort of, and other people are also able to sort of like look at a framework with these pronouns and sort of create their own sort of speculations or analysis in the space around them. And I think in a lot of ways, uh, that's what we're doing with Happy Grahe and DTI, is sort of looking at how to maybe bring community together in a different format and in a different context. Um, and a lot of the models and the speakers are, are working within innovative and very progressive models within the design, economy, um, arts sort of backgrounds. And these are things that are extremely important to uh, start focusing on not just as individuals or practitioners, but as a community and as an economy as a whole, um, just because of, you know, there's certain, there's certain things like these sort of skill sets or perspectives uh, enrich the local community, the scene, the, the society, and also it, in a lot of ways it, it's something that's important that we have to start speculating, taking risks on looking at what, what might the future actually hold, what it might be. Because um, if we don't take these sort of risks at looking ahead of us or imagining or, or daring, uh, we might just be stuck in, in a holding pattern or a loop where, you know, something could be disrupted and we could, you know, there's, cer there's certain risks involved too, right, that, that could impact our space. But, um, yeah, so in a nutshell, tropical futures is just a way for us to speculate or think about the future within the tropical context. And I have a small studio in Lahu, just walking distance from here. And we've been around for 10 years. And you could divide our work into two parts. Like the first five years was basically trying to make it as a creative. And we went all the way from the hook to working with some interesting projects. So we work with brands like Pixar and Disney and um, EA Sports and things like that. But they're all overseas projects, right? Um, so I think you understand that being Filipino, we always want to be involved in like, the community of some sort. We're the typhoon capital of the world. And whenever something happens, we're always out there trying to help people and trying to be involved in the community. And I don't know, maybe just innate Filipino nature, right? To be to, to want to do something in the community. So, like the middle point of our studio life, we said we devote one day in a week to doing local projects, and we started doing pro bono work. We did branding work for Cebu Lit Fest uh, through the Cebu. We did um, some work for for Cebu City Tourism, designing the maps and things like that. Uh, and this kind of grew. Where today, maybe half of our work is is devoted to doing. Uh, work for local businesses and and somehow it doesn't earn as much but it, it gives us um, a sense of being a part of a community and we get to see our work um, like one of the things that we did is this taqueria across the street called Red Lizard and it's about it's basically a graphic novel merged with our restaurant 
And from time to time, we get like fan art from kids who would never happen with doing kind of like, you know, foreign work prints in, in another country and you don't see it in your own city. So for a time, I, I had this like um, conflict with myself, like what, what, is the, what is really the, the true way to become a, a world-class creative or a very good creative, right? Is it community work or is it doing work for global brands or something like that, right? And, and, it, and doing work for global brands, it seems so easy to follow a pathway because a lot of people want to do that kind of work. They want to work for the Nikes, they want to work for the Apples. And, and it's very easy to follow a path and say, you gotta win these awards, then you gotta be in a big city, in a metropolis, you gotta meet all these creative directors and art directors. And then I got lucky, I, I, I started, my friend Dan Matutina, who's a famous illustrator in Manila, who's also one of the most multi-awarded illustrators in the Philippines. But he does a lot of community work, and he does a lot of pro bono work for like DTI's One Town, One Product program, and things like that. And he said, Mark, do you want to come and join some design residencies? And I joined, me and my wife, my wife is the studio creative director, and we joined some design residencies. We're in, we met all these great people who are heralded for doing work within the community. So some of them, like, for example, Roxy. Let me just introduce you. Like Roxy, for example. Um, so she, her studio is funded by AIM. And what she gets is she gets free studio space, and then her design studio gets payroll from the AIM, right? And then so the deal is for half the time of the time, they help uh, AIM businesses with their branding work, right? And then the other half of the day, or the other half of the week, they can do whatever they want. And so what Roxy does, instead of chasing some other clients, she does completely uh, work for what she calls impact-driven organizations, or nonprofits, or people who promote children's literature, or help uh, women who are abused. And they do that kind of work, and that's kind of growing. And so they have this, like, everyone here has kind of like a duality in their work. Uh, for example, uh, Felix, who's from Singapore, very famous uh, Singaporean creative director, is also coming here. So for half the year, he does design work, and then the other half of the year, he does something called a design film fest, which is <coughs> one of the first film fests in the world that's dedicated to showing films about design and art. And it's, it's been traveling around the world. And last, up to date, maybe 200,000 people have seen have gone to Design Film Fest. And for the first time ever, he's coming to Cebu City, and he's agreed to show some films during the forum. Um, Chris is another guy uh, who, who I met recently. So he doesn't talk much about himself, but when we, I did some research on him, and he has a design research background, and he went to Parsons. Wow. And he's actually a, he's, he's quite a big thing in, 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 like in apparel and in design research. So. So we're very lucky that he's he's spending some time here with us to share some of some of his ideas about what he calls like tropicality and and, and these ideas he'll explain during the forum, right? Um, Motoki is another interesting guy because I feel like I met him. We were in the same residency and we were like teammates. Uh, so he's he's probably in his mid forties. He's a lot older uh, than me, but I, I found his work super interesting because. Uh, he lives in Yamagata, which is nor north of Tokyo. And it's, it's a farm area. And uh, during the Great Tsunami, a lot of the businesses kind of got wiped out. Mm -hmm. And he felt like he needed to do something uh, for them. Uh, but then he had a studio of about 10 people that he needed to do payroll. So what does Mutoki do? I asked him, like, how do the businesses pay you since you have, like, such a big payroll? And I asked him how much his salary of graphic designer in Japan. He says, like, about 200,000 pesos a month. It's like, how do, you, how do farmers pay your payroll, right? So, I, so what he does is he goes to the government and says, I have made this program to help farmers rise up and, and, and sort of rebuild. Will you support it? And the government said, yes, of course. And so now they pay his studio to do award-winning work for local farmers. And that's like one of the example of a win-win situation 
which I think maybe we can apply to us if we work together. So these are like the kinds of people that I met and I kind of find interesting. And some of them, like people say, like, I have a day job and I can't do anything. So er Eric Tuban is, he's, 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 he's very famous in, like in the local, very community driven thing. He organizes a lot of musical events. But he lives in Cordoba and he works for a resort in Mactane. But he comes here every weekend to organize events so that musicians can have a place to play music, right? So, so, so these are all like different levels of people. Like there are big, there are people who are very famous, like Miki, Miki Hariyabi. He's like a top age, illustration agent in Japan. But he, half of the time he does Door to Asia, which is the residency that I joined, where I met some of these people. So a lot of these people have like dual roles. Um, Hana is another example. Uh, they have a burger shop called Mr. Griddle in Manila, mm -hmm. and then they use the top space as an art school to teach kids to make art, right? So, so uh, sometimes it's very easy to make an excuse, like, I, I can't afford a space, mm -hmm. or I have no time, but, but these people have found a way to kind of balance their life and, and do something creative yet still, you know, be able to support themselves. So in a nutshell, that's, everyone's coming together so that like, Chris and I, we made Tropical Futures Forum as kind of like this a platform. Everyone else's programs actually, if you look at it, they're so strong on their own already, but we just wanted to have a forum where they can come here, and they can talk about their programs and maybe meet some of the creatives also. Like I met them and now I do projects with them and I'm from Cebu, I'm from La Hoog, and I work with people that I met and we do community work together. So I think it's possible to be a student, to be someone who, as a local designer, to just open your mind to this, all of these possibilities and meet all of these people that do things. And they've been doing it for years, so they have discovered ways, like Motoki, for example, how do you, you know, and we're lucky, like, Ms. Nanette is like one of the most active DTI people I've ever met in, in my entire career. <laughs> Seriously. Yes, I no, like, and, and, and we're very lucky to be very supportive of, of the things that we do, even the small things. Sometimes we come here and it's 10 p.m. and yeah, DTI is still here. Like, what, why is DTI here at 10 p.m.? Like, is it the notion that we're at 5 p.m. we're in gobierno? But no, but they're, 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 very, they're very supportive of the committee and we're very thankful for, for DTI. So, so I think it's possible for us to work together and basically that's what the forums are about, right? It's just opening up ideas and possibilities and networking and meeting everyone. Basically, um, uh, you all know DTI, so you know, you know, you all know what DTI is doing, but I think you, you knew DTI like years ago, we were in the traditional brick and mortar space, right? Uh, furniture, fashion accessories, and what was mentioned. But three, four years ago, we went into the tech um, startup space. And because this is the future, so what, what DTI is doing now is really trying to marry, because these are two, two disparate uh, sectors, like one is brick and mortar, one is whatever, but actually they all need each other. So. What we're trying to do is to link both the brick and mortars and the what's happening in the uh, digital space. But basically, it's about also create the harnessing the creative spirit of Cebu and pushing innovation. So, like if you listen to Chris, tropical futures, thinking about tropical, what is that? What it was like? It was ah okay. So and then listening to Happy Garage also uh, explaining. Um, the, the people that you're gonna meet during Tropicals, Tropical Future Forum, but also Happy Garahi as a story itself. So basically it's really about different mindsets because if we talk about creative, uh, pushing for, you know, create more creativity, allowing this and having an enabling environment for both creativity and innovation, we need to have different mindsets and the ability to work together. These are different mindsets and then we're at war with each other. Different mindsets of an open, an open society that welcomes different ideas and the ability to put this all together and come up with something fresh, something new. So this is what DTI 
we are trying to do in this space where we are we are supporting communities to grow and because if you really dive into the community you'll be inspired with what's happening in Cebu and you don't see that you only see the exporters you only see the but when you really go deep into the community you will be inspired with what they're doing for example can you see happy garage so I look they started like maybe brick and mortar right and then he went into the fab lab and then he learned how to do digital fabrication so he has new products correct yes new products that were prototyped at the fab lab so meaning he jumped from just being pure brick and mortar into the digital space and he bought his own equipment and his so th these are the kind of things that we want to encourage that's why um for dti in cebu we have like five maker spaces all over like fab labs Fab Labs or maker slash maker, maker wow, spaces. Okay. Maker spaces. So we have the one in UP, where you are very familiar with. Then we have the one in for city. We have three. Maybe more. UP. UP. City Tuburan, City Argao, City Danao, and we have the one in Buko. This little Fab Lab that's being used by the Arts and Science High School kids. Of Bogor City, and you wouldn't you might inspired put more if you go there and see what the kids are doing with the fabulous there. So you have the whole city U here, and then you have city. No, no, no. City U Tuburan, city U, Tuburan. Argao, and the Nau. Bogor. Bogor is LGU Bogor. Okay. So while innovation innovation is something that we want to push there but a lot of fun good activity if let's say for example if you go to UP a lot of activity are more on the design aspect but if you go to Bogo for example it's more the science if you go to a uh, CTU Fab Lab it's uh, a mix of the two yeah but for Argo and then now we're gonna launch that Baha. so for region 7 we have actually eight Fab Labs so now we have Fab Labs, five in Cebu, one in Bohol, one in Secure, one in Negros Town. One in Negros and one in... So these are prototyping spaces. Bohol one, Negros one, Secure one, five in Cebu. Yes, so we have eight all over Central Visayas. And we're trying to harness, and ako, because I jumped from one province to another, I'm trying to link all of them and really also link them to Cebu because Cebu is really the center for Region 7 obviously and then a lot of what's happening in the provinces they would benefit so much if they link to Cebu so a lot of our programs for startups in Cebu um, na ay mga taga Negros and Bohol participating